Hello, esteemed viewers. This is Marco Su. And today, we're going to delve into a series that is most horrifying. I have given even the most hardened viewers I know for weeks on end, including myself. Its horror is unmatched by any other series ever made. And that, of course, is Urban Spook. Urban Spook by Urban Spook is a series made by Urban Spook that deals with the force that isn't too incomprehensible to me. But his crimes are truly unimaginable. Let's delve into the series. But before we begin, these videos are quite disturbing. Your discretion is not only advised, but encouraged. The series takes place over multiple entries. These are all being compiled by the police, and each are more terrifying than the others. The first is called Faces. We start off with a police description of the deaths of three people, Carly Gray, Jackie Graham, and Jamie Miller. Each died in gruesome death while being alive for the whole ordeal. The paintings, however, are the most horrific details. I will show you them on screen right now. And let me tell you, they are not for the faint of heart. The police later found pictures of more victims, as well as more paintings of more victims. But finally, they found one painting, the most horrifying, the painting of the killer. The second entry is called The Lighthouse. We start off with a police description of a police officer that witnessed four weeks ago. His name was Bill Collins. He and his family went missing after they found a painting of a killer in their house. The youngest son, two years old, was found hung in the attic. Here is the painting. In an abandoned lighthouse, the police found the charred body of Daniel Williams, one of the victims found one of the victims from the painting. The Collins family who found disincorporated in a barrel high on meth. There were photos found on the scene. Here are the photos of the family. Here is the scariest sight of all, a photo of the killer himself. The third entry, which ups the ante to new levels unseen before unfiction, is called In the Wars. We start off with a police description of two missing children, 11 year old Corey and Margaret. They went missing for 10 days. They were later found in an abandoned factory. Unfortunately, the twins were in a horrifying condition. They were both slaughtered and sewn together. Only the top part of Mac, Margaret and the bottom part of Corey could be found. By the way, you could buy the shirt of Corey, you know, the kid who died this way, for $30 on the Urban Spook store. Anyway, Corey's dick was pulled off. This is truly a masterstroke of horror, integral to the pop plot. This shows that the killer is perverse and will do anything. A brick has been shoved down Margaret's throat with the word meat written on it. Truly genius in the ways of subtlety. Corey had earlier gone into a remote cabin because he was dared to by a friend here. He found the killer himself. Here is a picture of the killer. The fourth entry, The Clue, starts with a description from private investigator Sean King, who has been helping police. Before his disappearance, he found the body of Tom Hayes. Tom, brutally he was covered in cameras and suffocated with acid. 
very realistic how the killer climbed up the drain pipe with 100 pounds of cameras, presumably premeditated. I do this every day of my journey. It's pretty easy. You just need to get games and music. He easily fit all of this through the bedroom window. Here is a realistic photo of Tom.
she had died and was mangled. A dead horse was also found in the stall she was in. It died of an overdose of Viagra. This is so scary. I want to call the police on Urban Spook. I want him behind bars. Truly a genius in storytelling. The decapitated head of the granddaughter of Ian Ford was found in a blanket. This is the picture. Several faces were hung on the wall from previous victims, as well as several large pig heads for some fucking reason. There was also a large pig carcass found with Ian Ford stuffed in Wow, he really was the pig all alone. Inside another room, they found several other paintings and music. Then sounds like how constipation feels. I was thoroughly spooked watching this. Truly a spook of urban. Then Footage is hard. Speak by Urban Speak. First of all, this series is used to promote his paintings, and that's why any critique I have of it is known and void. Any critique by any other reviewer or creator is simply a salty soy boy who can't handle real analog horror. This will mark a generation. Second, I love when the series relies only on shock horror, especially involving children. I hope he ups the ante even more next time. Don't worry, I am a completely sane individual. Sir, I think all relate to the killer in one way or another who hasn't wanted to paint one of their ex loved ones. Well, that concludes this episode. Unfortunately, I believe I have reached the absolute zenith of analog horror, so I shall be discontinuing this review series. Thank you for your support, and I will see you all again soon. This is Mark Osu, signing off for the first and last time. It's too scary, though.